All right, let's talk about using either a DC converter for six volt or a resistor and what might be better for you if you're doing some kind of thing on a six volt to 12 volt, 12 volt to six volt. Let's talk about this. So I'm gonna say best of the, most of the time, uh, I do have blue paint on my hands. Uh, it's actually looks worse much in the camera as a person. But um, this, a lot of people will think that they can use a resistor for your like a radio. Not a good idea. Let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, the best thing to always use is one of these to convert your electric power if you can get one. Now, I'm trying to run something a little bit more draw than this thing here can handle. This is a little more than a wiper motor. These things draw quite a bit of energy between, I don't know, somewhere over 15 amps, I'm pretty sure. Because when I had one of these 10 amp ones hooked up to it, it just fried. It burned a hole right inside of it. So I've been going through a few different ones to find the right draw. Uh, 8 ohms was too much. Um, these, I think, are just too small. They get really hot. They're 100 watt. And running two of them is supposed to be like 200 watts. But I don't know if that's really the same or not. Because I'm running these two right now and they get pretty hot. So I don't know how long they're going to last. So a resistor is not really a voltage drop. And a lot of people think that, for instance, let's look at the voltage. So if you look here, I've got on one side of the resistor, well, there's these are paired together too. So these are less resistance. I'll tell, talk about that in a second. If you look on one side of the resistor, it's like 12.4 volts, and the other side of the resistor is 12.4 volts. So a lot of people think that a resistor is going to lower the voltage. That's not exactly what they do. They, now I'm not an electrical engineer, I'm no expert at this, it's just stuff I figured out. Maybe this will help you figure out your problem if you're trying to figure out something. But uh, what what resistors do is they actually restrict the flow of electricity by using resistance. So what happens is, is when you put a load on this side, so this side's the 12 volt side, this side here is the hot side, this is the load side, this is the before the load, is when I put the, so when I run something that's six volts, for instance, I push this and I, push this button here and I look at the voltage now it goes down to 2.8 volts so what I'm saying is is they don't they they restrict the flow of electricity and what that does is basically lower the volts when it's under a load so it depends on how much load you're drawing from the system as to the size of the resistor that you're trying to get to come up with the right voltage. I don't know if that really makes sense to you, but if the, if you have, let's say, an 8 ohm resistor and you're drawing, say, 5 amps or something, I don't know, there's a, there's a formula to it, I'm sure. But if you're drawing, like, 15 amps from that, then it's going to take uh, a lot less resistance for it to do that where if it's drawing say two amps or one amp from it then you're going to have to have a higher ohm rating on your resistor this is kind of the way i get it hopefully i'm not backwards but um that's what i believe you need to do so if you're trying to like power a radio again not a good idea by doing this because it's going to have 12 volts coming out of it and that immediate second that you turn it on, is the electronics going to handle that? I don't know. Probably not. That's why it's better, typically, to use one of these voltage converters. They have these mini ones. These are available on eBay, also Amazon. Very cheap to buy. But in the case when you're trying to draw for a larger amount, um, burnt your, I can't find a res one of these box converter boxes that will 
do what I'm trying to do that will fit in that hole and cost a reasonable amount of money um, to do the job that I'm trying to do. So sometimes using a resistor is a good way to go. Now if you notice I have these really big ones, what I've got in there right now are these small ones. But I have these really big ones, these are 8 ohm and I need like, I'm looking at maybe what we have here. These are actually, if you look here, these are 4 ohm resistors. These ones here, because it says on it 4R, okay? 4R means 4 are you know four ohms and if you if it had a, a number on this side if it said four r seven that would mean four point seven actually measured out at five ohms but it's rated at four so anyway that's sort of how it works now these two eight ohm resistors are hooked up in parallel so basically this lead is connected to this lead that lead is connected to that lead that's in parallel series would mean that this would be connected to here and then this and this one here would be your uh whatever your your positives or whatever your positive and your negative or our you know your circuit would go through these two so it's hooked up in parallel right now what that does is actually takes the 8 ohm resistor and turns it into a 4 ohm resistor. So 4 ohms goes through this one, 4 ohms goes through that one. It's kind of like taking a river and dividing it into two streams. And the two streams it'll actually have less resistance because it's got easier to go through both of those two streams than it is to go to one river. If it makes sense to you, I don't know. But that's all you're doing is you're dividing the circuit into two means for it to go through at the same time. So it takes that 8 ohm resistor and makes it 4 ohms. I'll show you. But it actually measured out to 4.9. But that's probably because these were rated at 8 and put out or, you know, have a little more resistance than that. So anyway... That's how that works. You see how they put them in parallel and it comes out to 4.9 ohms or 4 ohms, uh, you know, roughly. So I wanted to have 2 ohms of resistance on this to try this so that it wouldn't drop the voltage too much. So what I did is I put, uh, I put these two in parallel which takes these both these 4 ohm resistors and puts them into 2 ohms because I tried these two and it was too much resistance it actually gave me 1.9 volts when it was under a load which is not enough to run my solenoids but anyway I was just trying to explain this to you a little bit so that if you are looking at using like a lot of guys will use one of these resistors to run their wiper motor, which is fine for a wiper motor, but not a good idea for your radio. So if you want to run your radio and your wipers, best to get one of these, you'll be a lot happier. You might end up hooking up your radio and burning it up because you're going to have 12 volts on each side of this because it doesn't volt doesn't drop voltage it adds resistance two different things so but they kind of will do the same thing um, when it's under a load and so for certain things like what motors or uh, electromagnet or something like that it might be okay but if it's anything with electronics and you're trying to use a resistor to lower the wires probably gonna fry something just doing if you wonder why that happened well it's probably the reason why I'm talking about in this video so I didn't fry anything but I just thought this was really important information that if you're trying to do something like that like this then it might just give you a little bit of a shortcut to well, at least you'll know what you're looking at and you're trying to figure it out 
I started out using one of these. This is a ballast resistor for a, a distributor or a coil for like a Mopar product project. They all have resistors in theirs. Some of the coils have resistor coils, like a Volkswagen is a resistor coil. The old Mopars would have this and some of the Chevys would have these. And what they did is they had on the starter, they had a separate lead. And what they do is they give you full voltage while your engine was cranking. And then after your engine was running, then it would run through this resistor. So it didn't wipe out your points as quickly. Or in the case of these, it was the ignition system, which was electronic. They were running, still running these. But again, my fear on this is just not, it just got really hot and it's not enough voltage drop. I'm not getting enough voltage drop. These typically on a coil would drop the voltage to nine volts. Well, on something as much draw as those solenoids, um, it's not dropping the voltage probably not dropping it near enough so it's probably you know because this is just not much resistor so anyway that's why i'm looking at these things pretty good idea i think to get the voltage down on what i'm trying to do um they're not expensive either and yeah i've used these so i can't return them and they're not they're too much resistance so I've got another one coming that's a little bit less resistant, um, and it's this size, so I'm hoping it works. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.